Welcome to the show. This is the Bot Brothers, AI for Educators with Mike Pearson and Pat Burns. Today, we have a thought-provoking show about creativity, AI, and education. And for this topic, we reached out to our friend, Katie Trowbridge. Katie has been a longtime teacher, and prior to teaching, she was in marketing. But recently, Katie is the president and CEO of curiosity to create which is a, I don't know if I want to call it a startup company or not, but it is a company that is focused on bringing curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking into the classroom. So Katie, welcome to the show. And maybe you could step in and tell us a little bit more about curiosity to create Yeah, absolutely. So I would say startup is the right word to use, um, but also nonprofit. So we are a startup nonprofit organization. Um, that is specifically looking at how do we help teachers take what they're already teaching with their curriculum that they already have to put in and infuse it with some creative thinking, critical thinking, um, curiosity, um, communication, those kinds of, obviously we know incredibly important skills right now that aren't being met in the classroom too much because the curriculum is taking over. Um, but we also are doing it in a way that it's not a new initiative. So what we're trying to do is, is workshop with teachers. Right, you, know, right. you know, teachers are way too inundated with more stuff. Yeah. Please don't give me more stuff. So this really right. is workshopping, coaching teachers on how to put this into what you're already working on, no matter what age, no matter what content level. So that's what, and, what we're all about. So are, are you primarily an online service or are you one that goes into the classroom or I you, go work in. Just, you go in? Yeah, so I do a workshops um, with an entire like a PLC team, or I'll do a workshop. I can do virtual. I've done some virtual one-on-one coaching, um, but otherwise, I I fly all over the place and uh, work with teachers all across the nation, and um, it's pretty exciting. It's a lot of fun. And, and is that K through twelve? K through twelve. K through twelve. And mm-hmm. and before and before this, our our, our audience knows you were a high school English teacher. I was high school English teacher for 22 years, I think. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. A long time. It's hard. I miss the classroom. I will say that. There are days when I really miss being inside the classroom. Yeah. And, and you're generally, so generally you're out of the classroom now and you're on the road in other people's classrooms? Correct. Yeah. Other people's classrooms, conferences. Um, I speak at conferences um, or just go into schools and, <laughs> and could teach like an entire, you know, fifth grade team and look at their but, curriculum know- with them. Okay. Um, so, so Pat was talking about, he was texting you uh, in, in a conversation and, and, he, and he'd said some, some stuff about one of the conferences and maybe Pat, you could jump in now and, and bring us up to speed on that. Uh, right. I, I recall reaching out to you, Katie. It's, it's always nice to, of course, kind of touch base with you and see how you're doing. Uh, and um, I, I think you'd recall, or you'd mentioned something about some sort of summit that you were at. Some sort of, I think it was like an innovative school summit thing. And I was wondering if you maybe could talk about what that was. And, and, and I'm also kind of curious because you'd made a, a comment when we were texting about the reception of things like AI uh, by the teachers that you're coming across. And, and you have this great vantage point of being uh, national in, in stature, right? Whereas we're, we're pretty kind of local to our area, the Chicago area. So what, what is kind of your, what, what, what is it you've noticed as you've kind of bounced around uh, to different states, um, and you know, and, and what's this all this conference you're you're at? Yeah, it's interesting. So the Innovative School Summit um, is a conference put on by EcuTrain, and I have been working with them, um, speaking um, at their conferences. They have some in Texas and New York, um, Florida. There's they're actually coming to Chicago in November. Um, they have Las Vegas, so they're kind of all over the place, and they really are um, looking at innovation within teaching strategies. That's one concept that they look at. They also look at SEL and different things like that. So um, there's, they're probably around 2,000 to 4,000 people per conference. Um, and I've had the privilege of speaking about what does it look like to have an innovative classroom? Um, and what does creative teaching look like versus creative learning? Um, and really trying to emphasize the whole idea of critical and creative thinking. So I, I speak and then I have a booth there as well where people can come and talk to me and gather more information. And it's been incredibly interesting when we talk about this idea of critical thinking and, and creative thinking because of AI. Um, I'm getting very mixed. And, and I don't bring it up necessarily. A lot of times they do um, as far as 
what do I think? Is this going to kill um, our students' ability to think for themselves, right? And it's very mixed feelings. So I'm, I am hearing teachers who are doing everything from, well, I have stopped all computers in my classroom. No computers are handwriting everything. Kids cannot use their computers all the way to, oh, I'm absolutely embracing it. There seems to be some fear um, and some anxiety around the whole AI concept in the classroom. That, that's interesting because that, that seems to kind of mirror, um, well, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily know of any teachers who have completely gotten rid of all tech. Uh, that That's maybe a little more extreme, although I've heard people talk about that before and bring that up. But it sounds like that, that your experience is kind of mirroring what uh, Mike and I have experienced, uh, just that there's a, a pretty big spectrum there. And that fear itself, the emotion of fear, is there's really a big, big driver for a lot of people and or, or maybe the lack thereof. Right. Um, uh, or, right. or and we've talked in the past in our program about like the, the concept of um, kind of going into the unknown. And and I mean, you, you know, Mike and I for, for years, and I think mm -hmm. we're, we're the type that kind of prefer to kind of go into the unknown and kind of see, well, what's that all about and kind of chart new, yeah. new terrain. And it's interesting that not everybody wants to do that. Uh, so. Well, and I think you have to consider teachers as um, a profession and as a personality. Right. There are teachers who really want control in their classroom. They want to do things where they've always done things. This has always worked for me. I don't want to change. Um, and so you've always been throughout my years of being in the classroom and, and working with other teachers, you've seen that flux, right? Of teachers who, yes, absolutely. I can't wait. Give me something new. And teachers who are absolutely not, I'm going to teach the same text, the same novel, the same paper for the last 20 years. I've taught it. It works. I'm going to stay the same. Sure. Um, and I think one of the things that you said too that's interesting is this idea of the unknown. Um, one of the things about creative thinking is embracing the unknown. And that can be a very scary thing. But if you don't, I talk to teachers all the time about, are you allowing students to have this um, productive struggle, right? Are you allowing them to, I don't go in that space where it's uncomfortable that I don't know the answer, right? I don't know the answer. Give me the answer. Well, as a teacher, are we allowing them to do that? and letting them kind of squirm a little bit in the unknown. What's happening now is that teachers are now in that space. Okay. Right? So teachers yeah. are in this space of, I don't know. We were in that space in society, but now we're also in that space when it comes to AI. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. I, you know, one thing, uh, Mike, uh, when we're kind of thinking about things we could ask you, uh, one of the questions that he had that I thought was really pretty brilliant, and it speaks to what you were just talking about, is this idea oh, of thanks. like, to what extent, you're welcome, <laughs> to what extent does uh, the structure uh, seem to either support or hinder creativity? Could you maybe talk about like in your line of work, um, not only just what, I mean, maybe, an maybe anecdotally what you, what you found, but even just like research wise, like how does, how does something like a structure, because I imagine you need to have some level of structure, right? You, you, in other right. words, you need like a sandbox to, in order to, you, play. you can't a just canvas. have nothing. Is. Yeah, you need, yeah, you right. need a canvas for the art, right? The, the, you need right. some parameters, but you bring up this interesting point about some teachers just wanting a lot of control and like, how does that then maybe uh, interfere or hinder, uh, you know, somebody's ability to create, but then, but then where is it maybe helpful? Right. Well, I think that that's, that's a great comment. And I think that that's important when you look at creativity, a lot of people think that it is just um, do whatever you want, right? If I'm going to allow my students to be creative in the classroom, they have free reign, they can do whatever they want. And then teachers feel like that's chaotic and lose control. There's that whole saying of um, think outside the box. And I'm not a fan of that because I think sometimes you have to think yeah. within the box, right? You, you have these, the structure, this parameter that's been given to you. Right. So you might not be able to think outside, but you have to think inside in a creative and critical way. So here mm -hmm. is my structure. I have a structure. And, and honestly, a lot of the research shows that creativity really is about making something that fits within the parameters of what's needed. Right. right. So it's not just you can't just say, oh, that was so creative if it really doesn't meet the needs of what you were expecting. Right. Yeah, so you know, there's oh, sorry. No, go ahead. no, I'm just saying there has to be that structure at some point. Yeah, I, 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 I'm actually kind of in support of what you said about the, the, the notion of being outside of the box is like outside of the box is no rules. So there's no game. So there's nothing to do, right? There's, there's no challenge. And the reason people game stuff is because there's a challenge. The reason you write a sonnet is that the structure itself forces choices that you wouldn't really think of. And it makes you more creative. 
And then I was also, as you were speaking, I was thinking of um, the, the concept of flow and achieving mm-hmm. a flow state. And the only way that happens is when there's sufficient enough challenge and you get interested in enough uh, that, 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 that happens. Right. So right. I'm, I'm kind of also with the, the thinking outside of the boxes, it, it's too big of a metaphor. You right. know, it's like, you know, you're in the box. You don't think your way out of it. You think about how do you use everything in the box? Like either, either change the box or change what's inside of the box or maybe get out of the box. Right. But sometimes right. maybe try a new have... box. <laughs> yeah. right. right. But at least you're thinking of all the options. Right. That you that there is mm-hmm. something within the box that maybe you need, that structure you need to work with and just work with it in a different way. And I really think that that's what is happening in education right now in the whole system, especially with AI. Well, yeah, because there's all the uncertainty. I think I think along with everything you said, I think there's another piece. I think there's teacher identity mm-hmm. right? that, that when AI came in, it's like, I mean, if you're used to pulling your own materials or creating your own materials and all of a sudden there's an assistant that can do it. And I, I felt this, um, especially, I especially felt this when I first started playing with chat GPT and it wrote a Villanelle or a sonnet or, and these, these exercises I would do with kids to have them work on structure. And I, and I was like, oh, it, it will do it. And it, and it, it does, the, it does the structure well, the thought's not great, but it does the right. structure well, but, but that's about what a high school kid usually can get through is the structure. And, oh, now what do I do with my assignment? Right. And that was before I realized I could use the AI to come up with other assignments. But 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 it but it impacted my identity. And then even even my writer identity, like there's a there's a program I just came across this week called um pseudo write, S-U-D-O. And literally you start you write a paragraph and then you can click on a box that's box that says write and it'll continue your paragraph in three different ways. And then you can like gives you options and you can select and drop it in there. Or you can have it describe, or you can have it do dialogue, and 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 they and they they kind of are selling it as uh, an assistant or like an editor or a peer that helps you work on your stories. And it, boy, it make me think long and hard about the romantic notion of you know being in a cabin in the woods in a writer's retreat, working every day to write your your great you know great American novel, and yet here's this assistant that's going to give you all this stuff. But then I really thought about it. I was, I was like, Hemingway and Fitzgerald had the same editor, and they were, and everyone wanted that editor because they were so good. And that same that same editor, I think he worked for Scrivener, um, like reworked all of uh, Raymond Carver's stuff until Raymond Carver could write the way the editor showed him, right? Which is just kind of mind blowing. That oh, right. you had an assistant the whole time, right? Right. Oh. right. And well, it, just, it just gets my identity, you know, at so many levels that I, I, I'm past it now, but I wasn't for a long, for a while is really shaken, you know? Well, and I think that that's what's happening right now. I think there are a lot of teachers that are shaken. Um, but I, when I've talked to some of these teachers, a lot of times I go back to, well, I remember, and I'm going to date myself, but I remember when I was taking typewriter lessons, Yeah. right? So yeah, I was I'm on an actual typewriter. And then all of a sudden the computer came in and teachers were like, oh no. Right. Well, okay. But then I also remember going to the library and using, you know, the microfiche and the, right. The card catalog. catalog. And then all of a sudden, right. Then all of a sudden the internet came around and it was like, oh no, what are we going to do now? And we have. And then they dropped cursive. Right. (laughs) Well, and we have think about, think about when you use Grammarly, right. Or if you use, I mean, all of those things can, can change. And teachers have had to adapt over the years. You know, I, I remember even my English high school English teacher teaching me how to do MLA. Right. Um, and I had to memorize that or I had to memorize the periodic table. Well, we don't have to do that anymore because we can just Google it. So I think that that's the space that teachers are in right now. And it's talking about identity of, okay, I have to change. I have to adapt, which again yeah. is a huge part of creativity and critical thinking is being put in a situation where you have to adapt. That's the only way you're going to make things better. So here we are again, right? Now we're in this, AI world and teachers are oh, saying again, oh no, <laughs> right? what are we going to do? And that's where I think it's so important that we learn how to adapt and we learn that we can, we're going to fail at this. We're going to screw up, period. I mean, this is new. Teachers screwed up and failed before. We're going to do the exact same thing on how do we input and use AI. But I think that there is this idea of balance that has to come in because yes. I don't think you can throw away the computer and say, we're going to handwrite everything right. now. 
And I don't think you can say, okay, AI is just going to be your teacher now and not me. There has to be this middle ground. Well, it sounds like part of what you're bringing up too, though. I mean, it, everything we're talking about really gets down to just what, it, like the human experience and all the and the struggles and the ups and downs that we have. But what what kind of really sticks with me is this idea that, and and I'm sure that we've talked about this in the past. We've all had these experiences of we just when we're in the classroom, we, we need some level of control, um, and and some need have maybe a higher or lower thresholds for that that need for control and are and it's really challenging that sensibility and to your point i think you're right that there has to be some sort of evolution or else you're or, or, or adaptation if you will uh, or else you're almost kind of dead in the water but that's it's a hard ask i think for particularly for for teachers who've been at it for years or they've gotten kind of kind of gotten into some sort of routine that seems to kind of like you know toss the apple cart up so to speak um but uh but but that that idea of of our our inherent need for some level of control, I think is really important. But to your point, like, how do you, how do you balance that out when, when it seems like there are so many things coming so fast and so furious with AI? Uh, you know, just the other day, I, I had two kids I noticed that, that were, that used chat GPT for an essay. And I'm like, well, now what do I do? And, and trying to figure out how to, and, and, and they're both distinctly different situations in terms of how they used it. So I have to figure out, well, how do I manage this now? And of course, that's, that's a whole nother that's a, becomes a discipline issue and, you know, plagiarism and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. How do you manage that in light of everything else that you're doing now? We always have to deal with plagiarism on some level, but this is just like the next kind of, like, I almost kind of worried, like what, what happens if you have like 15 kids that are doing the same thing, you know, then again, you have to kind of stop and say, wait, I got to rewrite what I'm doing in the class period, right? I can't just simply keep doing the same thing that I'm doing because it just doesn't work anymore. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if you're, if you're, if you're having, uh, teacher, or if you found teachers talking about that, that like this idea of like everybody using it in mass, well, then what do you do? Yes. Because I think it's right. coming. I do too. And I think what you just, you just said exactly what needs to be done, Pat. And that is, you know, 15 kids have now used chat or whatever. It's not the kids that need to change. It's us. It's our lesson. It's our curriculum. That's what needs to change. We are going, and, and that can be very scary for a lot of teachers who have been teaching for you know, 20, 30 years, um, it can be very scary for what's going on in, in our world too, where we have a teacher shortage and we're just having people mm -hmm. without education going in, right? Yeah. To Good say, point. I have to face all of this all of a sudden. How do I do this? Mm -hmm. right. And if the research is saying, hey, look, the number one thing we need is that when people graduate, when kids graduate and they come and work for us, they need to be creative thinkers and critical thinkers and be able to talk to each other work together that's the main well, thing all this research is saying that and yet we can't give them then that means we can't give them an essay that's a typical one of their mill essay and not expect them to just throw it into chat tbt well so so on that point though okay i i really appreciate bringing that up because i i think that sometimes we get so um uh focused on our own field that we don't necessarily think about like what ultimately we're trying to do for the kids right that that if you're saying that all the all these leaders and all the research is saying that they need to be able to uh, think creatively and, and, and critically. How do you see something like a chat GPT or any other AI sort of uh, based sort of software or programs or apps, what have you, being more of a, an, I mean, we've used the word assistant, but like, how do you see that as being helpful? Because I think that oftentimes, mm -hmm. and Mike, we, we know, we encountered this when we presented out just to neighboring high schools, which is like some people are worried that students aren't going to think as much, right? Or it won't, or, or it will stifle creativity. And I think that that's a, a, a necessary conversation to have with people as well. Absolutely. And I think you have to recognize that, yes, they could be right, right? I think that there has to be that, that yes, and kind of, yes, this could, but, and how are we going to, what might we do in right. order to not allow that to happen, right? Yeah. And so it's, we might have to change the way we teach. Think about history teachers or when I was in history class when I was younger, and, and it was all memorization, right? What date did this take place? What general was here? What, and Perfect. they had to shift because now I can Google it, right? So it's the same idea. Okay, so now what are you doing in our classroom that's going to encourage it? And I think one of the things that's important is looking at AI as um, maybe an assistant, but, at, but almost as a companion, as someone else to, to go to. Um, Think about the brainstorming. So brainstorming is a key component of creativity. Think about the brainstorming. How many times have I sat and then my kids are staring at a blank screen because they can't come up with an idea of what to write, right? Why not mm -hmm. use ChatGPT 
as, okay, here's brainstorm some ideas, get an idea that might work, and then you run with it. Um, you know, it's a great study. You know, I need mean, what are the basics of catcher in the rye or that kind of thing can also help. So I, I think that we have to, as teachers, start looking at AI as this companion um, that can be helpful. Um, and how are we going to use it so that kids then now take what they know? They know this stuff. They're going to use it. It's it's here. Right. We, period. It's here. So now what are we going to do with it? And how are we as teachers going to start teaching our kids to use it in a manner that is ethically correct, that um, will help build their way of thinking? Be, you got to remember, as you know, not all the information that these I, I, AI um software companies come up with this is correct there's there's information that's misleading right there can be information that's not necessarily correct mm -hmm. that's where your critical yeah. thinking and creative thinking is going to come in as well as a mm -hmm. we have to teach them who katie we lost you nope Can, we, we lost you for a second there katie you said we yeah. have to teach them what there uh, we have to teach them how to um think creatively and critically that's a huge skill so if they look at the information and they go through the information what is correct and what isn't you can't just assume that everything is correct and teaching teaching people to look at information and find that information is is valuable valuable, valuable i think yeah you know i go um I go back and forth with the content, like, oh, we don't, we don't have to do content. And I, I don't, I've, I've not done content really for years about like memorizing, you know, plays or parts of stories or characters, but I've kind of gone back and forth with it because, because of how large language models function, which is all probability. So you don't know if it outputs a correct answer if you haven't read the actual piece. Right. And then and I start wondering and and if you in order to write a good prompt, you have to have content knowledge to do it. And so I I start thinking like I started thinking back thinking of, well, maybe we're going back and we're gonna teach more content so kids have it up here so then they can get the prompt or the AI, they can ask the right questions to the AI. And I know you can prompt the AI to ask the right questions, but to verify those, you don't know unless you've read the work. And so I I kind of go back and forth. And then to go back to your point about like AI as an assistant, I, I'm in that camp as well. But there's been a lot of like post language kind of happening. There's that we're in a post knowledge world now because you can just search everything. But uh, just yesterday, there's someone that tweeted out something about uh, post plagiarism. Like we are now beyond plagiarism because if everyone is using AI and we're accepted AI assistance, and 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 if we you know then 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 if it's written a big chunk of your work and everyone's doing it that way, there's, there's no plagiarism. And I know there's, there's like copyright and legal stuff because it's all built on language all over the planet, but that's an interesting notion. And I started thinking about, I go, well, we have students peer review and peer edit all the time and they dramatically will change kids' works and we don't have them cite. Right. So are we getting to the point where we don't have to cite AI because it's just an assistant? Um, and and then I, I just keep on like thinking about the, like the plagiarism stuff. Like, is that going away? And then I, Pat, you and I have had this conversation. Like I keep on thinking that we are at like a, a garage band moment for writing, in which 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 like in pseudo write is kind of like that, where it just it, it goes, hey, here's like three or four different ways you could write that, and you just select and copy it in there, or or Quillbot will put stuff in parallel structure or paraphrase or summarize for you. And maybe what kids will be doing is selecting the best content that fits, almost like the, like the SAT test is like, should this sentence be here or here, right? And, and the kids, kids will read the output and say, I need to tweak this piece so it does this. How do I tweak it? And then so, they, so the AI is making the writing and the kids are just producing the writing. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm really, I really kind of I'm imagining that's where we're headed. There won't be, and then I then I think about my little girls that are five, and I go, but I but I want them to learn how to write too. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but I think that they will. You know, I think it'll just be different. And I think um, you're absolutely right. One of the main things I hear all the time when I talk to teachers is the fear of plagiarism. Um, we almost focus so much on that fear that we then don't look at what 
what good can come out of, not necessarily plagiarism, but what good can come out of using AI because we're so focused on the fear of, and yeah. I've heard teachers, well, I caught three kids plagiarizing this week. I caught, okay, I, yeah, I get that. I've caught that before AI. Right. And I think Pat, you mentioned like before AI, we had the, the plagiarism issues. One of the things, Mike, that you said too, that I really appreciate is the content. Um, with the create method that we've done, the C is content curator. Oh, that's what we call okay. it. That, that's the basis of everything is you as a teacher and you teaching kids how to be good curators of content. And once you have that and you know, okay, well, this is what I really want to narrow down. Those are things that you as a human being, you know, AI is not, they're not human, right? Chat GPT, GP, oh my gosh. Anyway. Hard to say. It can't. I know, I know. I'm surprised it's so popular with its um, name. It can't look at, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> it can't think for you. It can't no. put in humanity. It can't put in kindness, empathy, um, those kinds of things that we value so much into a piece of writing or into what you're thinking, we have to be able to do that. So like your girls will become writers, just different writers. Yeah. They might not be so into this is a verb, this is a noun, this is an adjective, this is a five paragraph essay, you know, here's a topic sentence. That might not be where we need to focus anymore. It might be more on the content and the curation of it. And are we creating something that is beneficial for society? Um, and that for teachers, I think is, is interesting as well. Well, your, your, your blog, one of your blogs was talking about, you know, does the production of the create or does the creati creativity create a product that is worthwhile, I think was how you put it, which I thought was really interesting because just to create something like this podcast, if no one listens to it, right. Uh, like, what is it? Right. Right. And it's the same thing of, you know, creativity, the five-year-old or the three-year-old who draws a picture and you hang it on your refrigerator, right? And you're, oh, you're so creative. That's great. Absolutely. Right. We're, we are creative. But when it comes to also putting in the critical thinking part, um, and that's really what I'm a huge component and, and what I, I talk about all the time is that you need both. So you need that creative thinking, right? The brainstorming, but you also have to have that critical thinking. And um, there's a, a quote that says that creative thinking and critical thinking are um, two sides of the exact same coin. Mm. So you have to have both. So you have to be able to brainstorm and come up with ideas, but you have to be critical and think what is the best thing. And that's, mm -hmm. AI can't do that for you. It can give you a lot of good ideas. Right. Um, and I play with it all the time. Um, you know, I mean, it, it can be great to write a quick memo or if I don't have, you know, brain power right now to come up with an email back. It, those are great things, but it can't think critically for you. It can't take that and say, well, this is actually the best thing for you to do. Yeah, so, it definitely that, refuses to do it. Right. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, okay, let me um, ask you this, because just hearing you out, it, it's making me think about the, how it is that uh, something like a chat GPT can give you, can make things so much more efficient that actually it saves you an enormous amount of time. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you see time in one's, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess one's uh, uh, ability to just have time uh, available to them help kind of foster a sense of creativity? Because it seems to me that sometimes that's, that's part of the issue too. Right, that the students just don't feel like they've got the space and time to really kind of work something out, um, you know, for a variety of different reasons. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, do you see time as being, or the the fact that that it can actually save them a lot of time? So you mentioned like brainstorming, right? That it speeds things up. It actually allows those creative juices maybe to flow more. Do you think, or is it, or absolutely? Oh, I do because I think it might, you know, even as just as we're talking and we say, oh, I never thought of it that way, or I didn't think about that option. That's where this is going to come in. And, and be helpful because it's going to give you a bunch of options. And now you have to think, okay, I wouldn't have thought of that. Maybe mm -hmm. I should run with that idea. Um, and I think that that will help with time. I think not even just for students, but for teachers. The last conference that I was speaking at, um, one of the things that I said is stop grading everything. Uh -huh. You don't have to grade everything. Mm. Um, and, and especially I think during this time, don't, you, it, kids have to be in an environment where they can take risks and feel mm -hmm. safe being able to take those risks mm -hmm. academically, mm -hmm. right? And if they always are feeling like we're grading their work, they're going to be afraid, as you guys know, to because right. to, 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 they're going to want the right answer, right? right. They're going to want the right answer because they don't really want to get that A. Well, if we allow them the freedom to be creative and think critically and use some of this AI, 
we're freeing up a lot of our time as well because they are critiquing their own work. They're doing the peer critiquing. We don't have to grade everything. And I, that was the one thing one of the teachers came up to me. She said, I've been teaching for 30 years and I really needed to hear that. I could give myself permission to not grade everything. Wow. 30 years of grading everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Brutal. And she said, that was one of the best things that, and she said, I don't, I don't know why I never really thought about that. And I said, well, the kids can teach each other. There's so much stuff online. They can check things. One of the things that I think is best for us is that we now as educators move into more of a role of facilitator, mm -hmm. right? That we have to be the facilitator of the knowledge. So there's this relationship between teacher, student, and knowledge. And who's up, if you look at it, even like a triangle, who, who's on top of it, of the triangle, the tip, is it going to be the knowledge? Is that what's most important? Is it the student that's most important or is it the teacher and how it relates to student, teacher, and knowledge, right? So for us, they can find the knowledge out online. But for us, it's going to be learning how to help them facilitate that knowledge, how to find meaning within that knowledge to keep them curious and keep them thinking critically and creatively. Well, the knowledge yeah. is there. And you know, That's, eventually ahead, Mike. the kids are going to get used to chat GPT and whatever, whatever new large language model, just like they got used to the internet and the John Green videos for books and, and for yeah. us, the cliff notes. And then, and then they just end up wanting to read the book because the same reason you don't want to have fast food all the time, or you don't put your food in the blender is you actually want to get through it. That's not every kid, but there, but there's always like that kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm, I mean, I think AI is really exciting, but probably a year from now, I might be like, oh, chat GPT, you're giving me the same thing. Right. And you'll start right. looking for the, the other, the other thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think it just like you said, just like the Internet, just like the cell phone, just like, I mean, everything is changing and evolving. We as educators have to be in the forefront of helping students navigate all of that, even though we don't know how to navigate it. And that's why I say there's got to be this balance. You can't just cut it away, but you can't make it front and center. We have to help them facilitate and think about these things and be creative and think critically. That's why and communicate with each other. So, I mean, I know you've had the same experience where you're sitting or even looking in a, at a restaurant, you see two people sitting next to each other texting, right? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. you have group work, right? And all of a sudden group work, they're all texting each other mm -hmm. <laughs> on their phones. Instead or of on their Chromebooks and just, <laughs> they're not actually talking. And doing the chat, right, right. Yeah. right. And so I think that that's one of the things too that's gonna become very important is being able to then communicate those ideas. So maybe, you know, AI is giving you the idea. How are you going to communicate it? How are you gonna make it relevant? How you can make it fit your audience. And I think those are all the things that we will be teaching and helping our students do more so than, um, you know, what color was Daisy's dress in the great right. Gatsby or what color was Holden's hat. Um, it's just going to be much more of this. So what does this mean in our society? Yeah, Pat, did you have a question? Well, a you know, was, it, there were so many, you. Katie, you got my brain firing on so many different cylinders. Uh, there was, we were talking about identity before, and then we we're talking about time a little bit, and obviously creativity. The, the, the notion of thought crossed my mind was, uh, you know, it, could this potentially be kind of the unleashing of AI into kind of the general public or main, making it mainstream? Will we look back at our teaching prior uh, and and think, wow, those were kind of the medieval times of of teaching, <laughs> right? Because you mentioned like the the, the grading uh, and how the the teacher was doing it for for thirty years. I don't know about you. I'm I'm depending on how I want to gauge my teaching career. I'm somewhere in around fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, something yeah. like that. And um, I, I'm just like I'm spent. I'm just like I'm so drained by yeah. all the essays. It's just it's a never ending you know tsunami well, of papers. What was and like, if I could just movies? have an assistant grade the damn stuff and I could do, and I could free up my time and energy and I could do other things and I could kind of, to your point, facilitate with students and help them kind of be content curators or, or what yeah. have you. Like, I, I think that that would be so much more fun <laughs> and interesting. Um, and, and the feedback, it's like, yeah, okay, I'll give feedback. That's fine. But it's, it's like the part of the job that I loathe the most for the most part. Uh, and there are exceptions. Mike and I've talked about this. Well, you know, aren't there sometimes papers that are great? It's like, yeah, for sure. And that's wonderful. But by and large, I'd rather just like have something like put my paper through like a scan trying like essay writing, grading thing, <laughs> like give them the feedback and be like, this is because ultimately it's for them. It's not for me. 
right? Right. Um, but yeah. then, but then, where does that open up space and time for me to kind of really work with them one on one? Because we put in, we 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 log in so many hours outside of the school day that I, I don't know. I think that that identity, that part of my identity, I'm more than happy to shed. Uh, and I would hope that other teachers would too, if we can find that the AI will actually give good feedback. I think it does pretty darn, pretty darn well. But uh, anyhow, so as I was just thinking about that idea of like, are we kind of like a, literally it's, just, it's a whole new era now in teaching. It is. We, just, we, we just can't wrap our heads around it because it's, it's, it's just evolving as we go. And what do we do about it? Right. Uh, right. Well, and I think, you know, you look at teaching, talking about the dark ages, sometimes I look back at what I was doing when I first started teaching. Um, and I thought it was so innovative because I had um, my kids do a like a um, chat between um, like in pilgrims and in, you know I mean I like I thought that was so cool I was going to have them do so oh, antiquated now everybody is doing those kinds of things or I thought it was so cool to have kids write a Twitter post that's not cool I mean it's not innovative anymore because everybody's doing it but we're learning from each other. Um, and I think one of the things too I wanted to mention, one of the big fears that I hear quite a bit is our students going to lose their voice. So, <laughs> you know, talking about, talking about having somebody else grade your papers, right? Um, how are we going to help students be unique and find their own voice? And for me, teaching a lot of juniors and seniors, as I know you guys have as well, that college essay, it's so important that they have their voice. It's unique. It's different. Um, and I hear that from teachers a lot. The kids are going to lose their voice. How are they going to know, um, you know, what their personality is when they're writing or even when they're speaking? And I think we have to be uh, cognizant of that. Yes, absolutely. That could happen. But then we have to be purposeful in our classrooms of making sure we're teaching voice. We're giving them opportunities to, to show their voice, right? That's maybe outside of that essay. Well, but that, but that is sense. it, you know, for sure. And I, the voice thing, uh, I've, uh, I've thought about it, Mike, and I've talked about this just kind of, you know, uh, away from the podcast before, because we've had, I've had students in my class, we were playing with um, uh, some AI stuff in class a couple of months ago, and the voice thing came up and they were very quick to say, well, I want to be able to develop my own. And I said that that's great. But they also recognize that there's a space to kind of like use it as an aid, right, to help them kind of cultivate it. I think in my head, I'm thinking, we don't give enough space, generally speaking, we don't give enough space and room and time in, in, a, in a curriculum for students to even cultivate voice. So to say that you're worried about, like when teachers say, oh, we're worried about students not having a voice or being drowned out, I'm like, we don't even give them the space, generally speaking, to, to create one anyways. So right. I, I guess in my head, I'm thinking, I don't know if that's as much of a concern as people think, but uh, not to say that the, the concern there isn't valid, but that I don't know. I, I'm not sure if you or Mike have any thoughts on that, but those are. Kind of I, I, got, I got a couple of thoughts on voice. Uh, um, the, the one that sometimes school, you don't have much of a voice because it's academic voice anyway. And then, the, and then when the kid's trying to does write in their own voice, like we don't accept it because we're English teachers. And, you know, it, when, when they so mm-hmm. you have the experience when the kid reads the paper out loud and you're like, oh, that's really good. But when you read it, you're like, that's not very good. Because like there's the written voice versus the spoken voice. But, but I was just thinking about um, just as a mind, kind of a mind blow up for the people that are worried about writing voice. Recently, I saw a YouTube where um, recording engineers have figured out how to do voice modeling, which means like if you're a rapper, you can um, you can record your your bars, your, your your rhymes, your ciphers, whatever, and then you can stamp a different rapper's voice on it. So you can literally make yourself sound just like Kanye, right, or just like most deaf. And, and so you start thinking about that. It's like, you think you start thinking about online presence and kids playing video games or stuff going into a metaverse or whatever people could, and you can do it in real time. So you could stamp your voice and sound like Kanye, right. All the time. And if you're not face to face, you don't have a voice anymore because you sound like Kanye. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and then, so then you start thinking about that and you think about speeches and presentations and all that stuff. And, and that whole like voice thing becomes even bigger Right. Um, and so I started thinking about that. And then and then I then I was thinking, well, if if chat, if large language models can write a bulk of the students writing and, and they and they mix it up or whatever, then they produce like what we're looking for, then then maybe what we are doing in class is helping them find their actual writing voice. 
is we'll have time to do that. Because I was wondering, Pat, right. when you, were, you said you would very happily kind of offload the grading stuff and work one on one. I thought, well, what would, we, what would we be doing? And well, there is there is an easy one. It's like, hey, we're going to work on what you sound like. Exactly. It's not that not chat. Chat can do all this, and that's great, and we're going to use it. But now let's just work on you mm-hmm. and your style and like and like write some really cool stuff. Like, mm-hmm. let's look at the language poets. Let's look at Stein. Like, let's just really go for it. Like, how far can you push your like, voice and how artistic can you be? Right. That's really interesting to me. Well, and I think that's really exciting. Right. It's it. That's the really exciting part of all of this as well. Right. What what we really want to do is create students who are thinkers creatively, critically, they're just thinkers. They think for themselves. And if there's something that can allow them, thank goodness for the calculator, I'm horrible at math, but the calculator can do that for me and free up my space to do other things that I want to do. So I think that we have to start shifting our attitudes and shifting our perspectives as far as, okay, this is something new. What are we going to do with it? It could be super exciting. It could completely change education for the better. As long as we are good um, stewards of what we've been given. Um, and, and I think yeah. that a lot of that goes back to the creative problem solving that um, we talk about, or I talk about quite a bit too, is students don't know how to solve a problem um, because they want, they just go to the internet and that's where it's going to change. So we, they're going to have to learn how to go through that creative problem solving to come up with the answer because the answer isn't on Google, it isn't on the internet, it isn't on any AI. It's got to be a human kind of process that we go through. And if we can take our classrooms and change it more to focus on that, how exciting right. is that? We're going to have these kids graduating from high school. We're going to have third graders, fourth graders who can say, hmm, that's a really great problem. Let me brainstorm that for a little bit. Let yeah. me think about it. Let me, and I'm going to try and come up with an answer. I mean, what a wonderful world that would be. I mean, look at what happened with COVID. I mean, AI was a part of coming up with um, the shot and coming up, you know, I mean, with the vaccines. Right. Yeah. AI, so thank goodness we have it, but we also had to have the humans who helped work on those things. Right. So I think that it, that's what makes me, when people get scared and afraid of all this, and to me, it makes it much more exciting. Like teachers yeah. are losing their joy. Well, this might help bring their joy back. Right. right, we can focus on the kid. We can focus on the student. We can focus on them becoming a better, stronger thinker in our society instead of just regurgitating what we're telling them. Yeah, yeah. What? That's amazing. Like, what then, can you do with this tool? Right. Like, what? Right. What are the artists going to do with this tool? Like, when are they going to be like, okay, let's do this? Right. And students will do the right. same thing. Uh, well, it's 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 interesting on that point because that it seems to me that like kind of coming back to this idea of like have we been, have we been teaching in the dark ages and just didn't know it uh, that uh, that by ceding control or, or by we we were kind of forced into having to give up control as teachers but it would it would the the consequence of that I think is it's also true that students are also given much more control to kind of guide and dictate what they want to do and we again, maybe just have to facilitate it better, figure out how to kind of manage that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we can, uh, but but then the amount of creativity and diversity of thought and idea and and whatever comes out of it is going to be staggering such that it might be just a whole new renaissance. And we're like, whoa, because I, your point, like I I could definitely see some kid in elementary school level coming up with something and you see him up on the news at some point and you're like, oh my God, look what this kid did with AI. And everyone's like, what? And and it makes you wonder, well, why would we hold anyone back? Like we have the ability to do so much now, so let's open things up, um, you know, and 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 not be so worried about having such a, a lockdown on the classroom. But that that's that's asking a lot too, though, right? Uh, I don't know if psychologically we're emotionally equipped to handle that right now. But right. Um, yeah. Well, and I think that that's the problem, right? I mean, we're throwing something new um, into teachers' arena that. To, where they are already exhausted, they're already overwhelmed. Uh, they yeah. are, you know, already stressed out. Yeah. And now we're saying, yep. oh, by the way, now we might have to change everything mm-hmm. because yeah. we have AI. And that uh, is where teachers are like, wait a minute, <laughs> I have been teaching for 25 years and it's been working. Leave me alone. I don't have space to do this. And so that's one of the reasons why I think it's so important to have podcasts, to have communities. Like we are starting um, what's called the Creative Thinking Network, 
um, that's going to be um, going live in a couple of, of weeks where teachers can go on and say, I've got this idea. Have you tried this? Have you oh, tried cool. that? And I think that that's what's really important is that as teachers, we stop sitting in our rooms alone and we start working with each other. Um, I know that when we all work together, um, one of the things I loved most about our school and our department, I should say, is that we shared ideas, right? Hey, this worked, this didn't work. And that's what I think teaching has to become now. It has to become this idea of we're going to work together and we're going to figure this out together. I'm going to take some of your burden, Mike and Pat. You're going to take some of mine. And together we're going to come up with this great idea that's going to work. Not that I want it to be, we're all doing the same things on the same day, right? But it's that we are going to start having kids start thinking for themselves where we can sit back. I was talking to a math teacher the other day who's doing some fabulous things in her classroom. And she said, literally, she sits back and she lets them do all the work. Mm -hmm. And then she just, you know, gets involved and they, they have a blast doing it, but they're really helping each other learn. And they're teaching each other, they're communicating with each other, they're looking at things from different perspectives. And they're doing that while she sits back and facilitates. And I think that's what we're going to get to, but we have to support each other in Mm -hmm. that so that the teacher who does, who's maybe listening to your podcast right now and says, oh my gosh, I can't change everything. You don't have to. Just try one little thing, Mm -hmm. one little assignment, one little step. Go online. There's so many great resources online that people can will help you and and facilitate that and coach you. And I think that that's where education is going to become teachers are going to become this great community of people who support each other. Mm. Oh, that's a positive note. Yeah. That's really well said. Thanks. (laughs) I just, I guess, I guess with all the conferences and all the stuff that I am going to and seeing that teachers want to, I keep hearing, I want to, I want to be creative. I want my kids to think for themselves. I just don't know how. Mm. Right. And I think that that's where as teachers, then we say as a community of teachers, you know what, I just figured out something. Let me share it with you. You try mm. it. Or I have this idea. Can you make it better? Right. And I think that that teachers are longing for that. Teaching can be very isolating. As you right. know, you sit in your classroom. Um, Pat, I, I mean, I will say that I miss our conversations that we would have um, or you'd come in and we'd sit in my classroom and we would just talk for an hour. Right, right. About anything, you know, I mean, and that's, I think, what teaching will become much more, um, much more of a philosophical, let me think about what's the best way to do this and teach this content than it is, let me do, let me give kids a 10 point Mm -hmm. quiz. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, especially to to Pat's point of the the big pile of papers, right, can the the kids can get feedback on on those necessary skills without the teacher having to be the one giving all the feedback and it frees you up to do more creative things, right. Or, or do something else. You know, um, I, I, I have always had this, I've had this nagging feeling for years that, that the standards we teach to are not the right ones that the, the actual standards that we are trying to teach to are, are creative thinking and critical thinking, but we never ever come out and say that. Right. We, we, we hide, it, that, we hide know, it behind. We hide it behind other standards or other. In Australia. Yeah. Well, and in Australia, which they are way ahead of the time, they actually have standards that are creative and critical thinking that they put into mm-hmm. rubric format that students and teachers have to abide by. So yeah. it's not oh, just they don't. Awesome. I mean, it's great. Yeah. It's in a book called The Thinking Classroom. Um, and, um, it, it talks all about what they're doing and how they're doing it and how they're really emphasizing, not just the knowledge that, Hey, you know, the knowledge, the big K, but it's also, um, acknowledging the fact that they have to think critically and, and creatively. And what does that look like? And, and teachers have to then evaluate are our kids getting it. Are they thinking on their own? Um, and that in that book, you know, the thinking classroom in that book, it has, um, the rubric and everything in there that they're using. It's it's pretty exciting what they're doing. They're way ahead of us. Is is this the same one that's by, I'm going to butcher this last name. It's like Peter Lil Jadal or something like that. Does that sound right to you? Uh, I thought it was, let me think, hang on. There's a couple of thinking classroom books. Okay. Um, but this one is, oh, the thinking classroom is that one that in mathematics, that one's great. Okay. Um, yeah, that one's very good as well, but that's not the one I'm talking about. I'd have to look it up and see for sure. And then you can always link it in your notes, but, okay. um, yeah, I mean that, 
I think there, there are plenty of people. I know Ireland is, is doing some really cool things. There's people doing some really great things with the idea of thinking. Um, we're just, we're behind. We're behind. Okay. Or yeah, we've we, been doing something different, I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah, I guess we are doing something different. But I, I also think we're going back to what we started saying at the beginning is, oh, here it is, Thinking Classroom. Alice, um, V-I-G-O-R-S. So supporting education to embed critical and critical critical and creative thinking is her book. Okay, um, right. So I, you know, I think then that that would show you some of the stuff that they're doing there. But I think mm-hmm. that yeah, maybe we are doing things different, Mike. But I also think it's we have to be able to adapt. When we started talking about yeah. at the beginning of the episode is we have to learn if we want our kids to be uncomfortable in in the ambiguity. We as teachers have to be as well. We have yeah. to let go of some of that control. So we have to be willing and open to change that open-mindedness um, of, hey, look, maybe this isn't working the way I want it to work. Even though it maybe worked last year that way, it's not going to work this year. There's, um, and I, I think we, we should probably start closing off this, this podcast, but um, I have, I've had a poster. Actually, it's a quote from a, an analytical thinking book. I, I took the quote out and blew it up for, for, my, cla- for my classroom kids. And it says, uh, try to accept that uncertainty is a precondition for thinking. Yes. And I would add on to that, to thinking and innovation. Yeah. Right? And, and Yeah. And, and kids just, they want that answers it, because we train them to want and answers. And it doesn't have to be bad. Right. Right. Instead yeah. of making them the actual detectives of trying to find the answer, right? Giving them the clues. I mean, to me, I think that this is just an, an exciting time in education that um, I think things are going to change, um, I think, for the better. I think as long as we're balancing it out and we as teachers are giving ourselves permission um, to make mistakes, to not know it all, and to work with each other. Wow. Hey, hey Katie, I don't, I don't know about you, but in, in Mike, like, I, I think I all day I've been kind of like lethargic, but just listening to you and talking to you like is definitely making, feel, making me feel reinvigorated. So I really appreciate that. I, I think that, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Super it's just it's, it's inspirational to hear it. Yeah, Good. I, I'm I, glad. I, think, well, I, I think that that's what's important. Yeah, I think that uh, anyone that that does listen to this is gonna is gonna feel um, equally inspired and and positive. Um, so we really we really appreciate you coming on under our show and taking the time out of your busy schedule. And we we really appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, Pat, any last thoughts or questions or Katie, anything you want to put out there before we um we say our goodbyes? No, I think um, if, you know, again, just a plug, you know, curiosity to create, um, we're a nonprofit, so we're always trying to raise money. Um, one of our, the things that we do is we raise money so that teachers and school districts who can't afford professional development on, on this topic, we have a scholarship where we can offer that. Um, and that's why we're a nonprofit. Because I think it's important that it's not just schools and teachers who have the money um, to invest in a, a coaching, personal development. There's so many teachers who, who don't and districts who can't. Um, and this kind of, of thinking, right, this kind of training needs to happen nationwide. Um, and so they can always, if anybody's interested, you can always go to um, curiosity to um, That's got a ton of information. We're on Facebook and we're on Twitter and we're on Instagram. Um, or you can always reach out uh, to, to me and my team. We have, I have um, experts in looking at junior high, curriculum, looking at elementary curriculum. Um, I have lots of incredible education, creative experts that, that work along with this as a team. So yeah, if anybody ever needs anything, I would, they can always reach out. Great. We will drop all that, all those links. So you have them in the episode notes and it's, if you're just listening, it's, it's curiosity to the number, right? The number two, when, right. When you search that up. Great. So um, again, a huge thanks for, uh, for coming out. It's great seeing well, thank you, you again. so much, Katie. Just really oh, enjoyed good the to conversation. See you guys. Always, it's always, been a joy. always love talking to the two of you. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode or learned something, please share this podcast with your friends or on social media. If you would like to be part of the conversation or if you'd like to see some resources, there is information linked in the show notes. We would also appreciate if you click the follow button and give us a rating. It helps us help you. Until the next time, this is Mike from the Bot Brothers, AI for Educators.